Hello, so this is sort of an introductory sort of uh, presentation related to B2.5 genetic variation, part of the New Zealand Level 2 curriculum. Um, now then, the first thing that we need to be aware of for this is that all things, all living things, for example, a dog, are made from cells. There's a dog, it's made from cells. Here's Chuck Norris. He's made from cells, even though his cells are obviously stronger than our cells. Um, I'm made of cells. Cats are made of cells. Monkeys are made of cells. Plants are made of cells. Bacteria are single cells. Everything that is a living thing is made of cells. Now, here is a cell, in this case a dog cell. And inside the cell, part of the cell structure, is a structure known as the nucleus. And inside the nucleus is where we find DNA. So every cell in a living thing that has a nucleus contains DNA. So here's a close-up of the nucleus and inside it we can see these structures here. These structures looks like little X's. Now these things are called chromosomes. Now, chromosomes are made of DNA. Now, in humans, we have 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs of chromosomes, and every single one of those chromosomes is made up of long, tightly coiled lengths of DNA. Um, the details in which we go into in one of our slides for B2.7 gene expression. Now, chromosomes are homologous. That basically means that all the chromosomes exist in pairs. There's a pair of chromosomes, there's a pair of chromosomes, here's a pair of chromosomes, and so on. Now, this diagram here, this diagram here, is what we call a karyotype. A karyotype. Now, what um, is basically done here is a cell in its dividing state because you can't really see the chromosomes until they've condensed and they only condense during cell division um, is uh, taken basically a photograph is taken under a microscope and then using a computer the different chromosomes in the photograph are moved around until they're arranged in pairs. And they can tell that they are pairs because they look similar. Okay, And the reason why they look similar is because they actually carry the same genes. So here's a homologous pair of chromosomes down here. That's why we've got this diagram. Let's say that's chromosome number 10. I'm just guessing here. Let's say that we've taken this pair out. We've zoomed in on it. And we're concentrating on a few things. So, all of our traits are carried on both of these chromosomes. So, if these chromosomes are responsible for carrying um, the gene for eye color, uh, a gene for enzyme A, which could be part of a metabolic pathway, and a gene for cytochrome C. Okay, now, that means that we have a copy on one of the pairs of chromosomes, and we have another copy on the other of the pair of chromosomes. So it means that we've got two copies of all of these genes because we have our genes arranged in pairs. Now sometimes these genes can be in different forms. So even though it codes for eye color, it might code for a different type of eye color. And these alternate forms of genes are known as alleles. Hopefully I spelled that right, as alleles. Now, that means that alleles exist in pairs. So it means that you have two alleles for eye color, for example, in your genotype. Now, why is this? Why do we have chromosomes in pairs? What does that mean? Well, it all sort of goes right back to reproduction, like most things in our lives. Um, now, over here we have the process of cell division known as meiosis. And that example there is in the testes and over here, the ovaries of the female. 
So in the testes of dad and in the ovaries of mum. Now, what happens with meiosis is that you start with your original parent cell and you have all of the chromosomes there. Everything in pairs, so in this case 46 chromosomes if it was a human. Obviously we haven't got all 46 chromosomes in this diagram because it would make the diagram far too complicated. So, what happens is DNA replication occurs. There's a copy made of every single one of these chromosomes. So it means we have twice as many chromosomes and so you end up with um, 92. Okay. Now, um, another thing occurs here known as crossing over which we'll go into in one of our later slides but what that basically means is the DNA is reshuffled up creating more combinations of alleles. Now, this cell here divides and that means that so does the DNA. So it means that we end up with 46 chromosomes again. We're back to the original number. But the difference here is that these cells divide again and but we don't get any, in, uh, any DNA replication occurring at this stage so it means that the number of chromosomes halves again. So we end up with 23 chromosomes in our gametes. Now the same process occurs with the female. Ah, if I can get the mouse sorted. So um, here we have the original parental cell, 46 chromosomes. DNA replication occurs, which means we've got twice as many chromosomes because every chromosome is copied. We have a double up. That cell divides, which means that we're back down to 46 chromosomes. And because it divides again without any copying going on, we get half the number of chromosomes in the gametes. Now, fertilization. Now, what happens here is that one of these gametes, one of these sperms, let's put a tail on it, there's a sperm, is going to fuse with an egg in a process called fertilization. And when that egg and sperm fuse, so there's the egg and sperm, they fuse, we get 23 of the chromosomes from dad and 23 chromosomes from mum, making a total of 46 again, half of which are paternal, which means that they're chromosomes inherited from dad, and half, whoops, half of which are maternal, maternal for mum, okay? So half the chromosomes come from mum. And that gives us our full complement of 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs again. And then what goes on is mitosis, which is cell division for growth and repair. And obviously, there's going to be a heck of a lot of cell division going on to go from a single cell, the first fertilized cell, which is known as a zygote. Whoops, G, zygote which is going to divide and then divide again and divide more and more and more so on by mitosis until eventually we end up with a baby and then that baby continues to have mitosis going on meaning it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until that baby becomes a teenager uh, and then about 18 to 21 stops growing too much apart from maybe repair hair follicles and all the rest of that sort of thing um, and um, yes there you go next all right so what does that mean chromosomes exist in homologous pairs so Chuck Norris is a wise man and one of this pair is inherited from the father and the other is inherited from the mother so it means that we are the product of half daddy DNA and half mummy DNA. Both chromosomes in the pair carry the same genes, which are sections that code for a protein. These genes can exist in different forms known as alleles. For example, the gene for eye color can exist in a form for maybe brown eyes and blue eyes, which is sort of a classic example of that sort of thing. Um, obviously, those of you who have been a little bit more observant and notice that people also have green eyes and 
violet colored eyes and all the rest of it um, should have realized it can get a little bit more complicated but um, there you go alright thank you for listening good night